So uh, from first to our second player, I'm going to go. <laughs> what a transition. Ray Davis, <laughs> Kentucky. Five foot eight and three eighths inches, 211 pounds. He's got eight and seven eighths inch hands, 30 and quarter inch arms, wingspan of 72 and a quarter inches. He is a bit on the older side, 24 years old. He'll be 25 in November. Ugh, indeed. In the 40 yard dash, he ran a 4.52 with a 1.56 10 yard split. He had a 20-yard shuttle of 4.51, which not is great, not, not a great difference between the 40-yard uh, and the 20-yard shuttle there. Uh, the broad jump of 119 inches and a vertical of 35 inches. So Last year in 13 games, he <laughs> got, got, me too, got me too. <laughs> got me too. <laughs> he had 199 carries. 1,129 yards rushing, 14 touchdowns, 33 receptions, 323 yards receiving, and an additional seven touchdowns for a total of 21. Wow. All right. Ray Davis, formerly. And <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the Dynasty Nerd Fantasy Football Podcast. You got to tell him about how we had him on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> formerly known as Raymond Davis. Yeah. Uh, we actually had him on. If you're uh, After his freshman year. After his freshman year. Oh, 1996? Yes. <laughs> so that would have yes. been Temple. That would have been at Temple. Yep. Uh, then he went to Vanderbilt. Then, then he went to Vanderbilt. Then, then he went to Kentucky. <laughs> uh, but while he was at Temple, we had him on the talking or uh, film, nerds. film nerds show, yeah. breaking down some of his tape. So it was kind of cool to have this come full circle. It's and, cool. Yeah. We used to do that. Yeah. We we, we need might, to do we that. Might bring it back. Yeah. We might bring it back. We should. We should definitely do that. We say that every year, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, the labor that is involved with doing those shows. We weren't doing nearly <laughs> as much for Dynasty Nerds when we were doing yeah, that show. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's uh, just... That's how we became friends with DJ Dallas. That's, that's how we became friends with DJ Dallas. That's we had... I, I, so I did not have three kids. Very presumptuous we. Yeah, <laughs> nor, nor did I have three kids. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. We also had uh, Isaiah Coulter on the show and... One other guy? We didn't have Isaiah Coulter on the show? We did. No. Didn't we? No. Who didn't was it? we? We had, we had some didn't fringe receiver we? that... Oh, the kid you liked out of Cal. Um... I'm forgetting his name now. Me too. Oh, well. Don't matter. I liked him a lot. Must have been a good one. <laughs> anyway. It didn't so pan out. <laughs> Ray, Ray Davis uh, out of Kentucky. Yeah, older prospect. Had a really, really awesome early production at Temple. And things just then kind of went sideways. It, they petered off. They, they did. He didn't didn't produce nearly as much. Things were going super well. He only played he, four and three games in his, in his second and third years. Yeah, so it, it, he kind of fell off the face of the earth. Really reemerged though this year with Kentucky. Had a really good season, especially when you consider going up against the SEC, some of the best defenses, some of the best defensive players in the country. Uh, had a really solid senior bowl uh, overall. Started getting a little bit of hype with that. Uh, but if I'm being completely honest, watching his tape, I was a little underwhelmed uh, watching his tape. I do think there's some things that he does really well. I think he has some of the best vision in the class. I, uh, I think he's. I think he's a very smart runner of the football overall but when you have somebody that's already older you know when when they're 20 years old 19 21 like that kind of range you can expect some of these physical attributes to still improve at this point i don't think there's any hope of any of these physical attributes improving much and if he's already topped out at being you know a very smart player i just don't know that there's any more ceiling for Ray Davis, and and that's the problem that I have with him. It's not that he's a bad player. I think he's a very serviceable player, but he doesn't have a lot of speed. He doesn't have a lot of explosiveness. There's no part of his game outside of his vision that I would say is a true difference-making plus. And while that is fine for a backup running back, I don't think he's ever going to see significant carries at the NFL level for an extended period of time. My guy, Polk. Makai Polk, that's who it was. Yeah. And he was somebody like that. Yeah, and him being that old 24, there's actually going to be a decent amount of running backs we talk about that were that are on the older side. Seniors. Yep. Uh, not, we're seniors or fifth-year seniors. So there's a lot of older running backs here, which really kills their value. Um, that being said, I, I kind of disagree with Garrett here. Okay. Um, I actually came away liking Ray Davis's tape. Um, now, when I say that, I don't think he's like – uh, like oh he's a future success but I think he's a very solid running back. Like what uh, round? Like oh NFL in the NFL draft, draft? Five. five fifth yeah round right around there because I thought I mean first of all I think he I don't see how you could give 
a running back that's this old any more than a fifth any round. more than a fifth round. Because I think they would just view him as yeah. a one contract guy, anyways, which are right. most running backs. As it is, I mean, I think the NFL is kind of using them like dynasty, right? Like first contract, let's go. That late doesn't matter anyway. So these aren't players you're trying to re- really retain. If they want to, they could just franchise tag him for the cheap if they wanted to. Um, but for me, like I thought, like I thought he was really good um, with yards after contact. I thought he broke tackles pretty well. I think he breaks arm tackles really well. Uh, I think he's got just enough shiftiness to kind of cause guys to miss enough that I think he can break that kind of stuff. I don't think he's physical physical though. not physical yeah. yeah yeah i don't i didn't want it to be misconstrued yeah. i don't think he's a powerful he runner yeah. um but i think for being a guy who's five foot eight to eleven who's not really overly fast i thought he moved really well laterally i thought i thought he's a nice shifty running back i thought his yards after contact were pretty good i looked it up he averaged last year 3.81 yards after contact um for a player like i said coming after back a thousand over a yard thousand yard season had over a thousand yards of Vanderbilt the year before but you know for the for, for a guy I knew nothing about, when I got done watching all of his tape, I was like, oh, he's a very... It, it, he's like the epitome of like this entire draft class for me, almost. I saw all these guys like... Solid. Oh, he's solid. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a fine running yeah. back. Like, there's... there Every running back you can nitpick in this class, but like, in the right system at the right time for about a year, maybe two years... Mike Davis. This could be... Yeah, this could be a, <laughs> this could be a viable NFL running back. Sure. That could be your running back three on your roster. If he can come in for a couple games and give you good, you know, production on the right team and the right system, but he, he in between attack, like in between the tackles, he, he's okay. He does everything. Like he's okay. Quick, he's quick, not fast. Like, he, yeah, even if he gets out and breaks one, he's not going anywhere. Um, and, and while I understand what you're saying, Rich, for me, especially at the running back position, like I, I just can't draft a guy where he'll probably go based on, like, where can he go from here? Like, he could maybe make it to here, but he'll never but, make it but to But you're here. saying, where's he going to go? In the rookie draft, he's going to go in, like, the fourth round. In, of your in the back of my mind, this is... All right, maybe we're saying the same thing then, because to me, a fourth-round pick is not a very good guy. Oh, I, I just think they're going to get pushed down because the receiving class is so deep. Like, okay. it's like... So, the first round, definitely a super flex league. Like, I expect... I, th- I expect this year, like, the fourth round will be, like, where a lot of run in Mexico. Because I think a lot of people are going to be willing to gamble. And, uh, and listen, the NFL draft is going to dictate a lot. Like, where do these guys end up getting drafted? Like, you said that, that before. Like, where do they, what round do they get drafted in? That's going to help dictate this li- list. I think Blake Corum will probably get a little bit overdrafted, probably to the Chargers. But um, I think that's going to help, like, because dict- these guys are, I mean, right now, this list of guys we're going to talk about over the next few days, these, what, 12 guys we're going to talk about? Like they're all really close to me, like for the most part. I mean, I get some of them aren't. Some of them aren't. <laughs> uh, tw- uh, okay, let's say eight out of the twelve got, and like, sure. and some of them are pretty distinctive, like Jonathan Brooks at top, um, Jalen Wright at, at the top up there. So the or- I can still put these in order on tape, but I can easily change and manipulate that order by the NFL draft as well, and where they go, and what kind of opportunity they may have here on the pecking order. And Ray Davis falls in the category of me of say, him going to a place like. Say he went to like Arizona, right? And he it's like he's competing with DJ Dallas, no, Michael no Carter, and then James Conner. That's 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 a little different, but like, or what if he goes to the Giants, who have a terrible offensive line? If he goes somewhere where there's at least a path, like I feel comfortable with him enough, even, even though he's older, rosterable. He's rosterable for me, and and I at the same time, like my running back situation is already as fluid as the possible. Be and most dynasty players have caught up to that whole concept, anyways, where they know the running back is the most fluid position on their roster. Right. So he fit this kind of player is like, oh, this is nice. Like I can get him. I know for sure he's on my roster for about three years, and then he's gone. Yep, three to four years. And then I, I put him out. He's the epitome of a two to three year window guy. He, there's no way he's getting into a second contract in the NFL, let alone you know anything significant where he's going to be producing on that second contract. But he, he, he can catch the ball. Too. I mean, he has three down yeah, capabilities. He absolutely like he's does, a three yeah. down running back. He does everything well, nothing great. He does everything good enough. Good enough. As, as Not even well, I, but good I, enough. Echo. But I liked his, t- like, I, I came away pleasantly surprised. I wrote he was, he does, he does enough things well <laughs> to make an impact in yeah. a short term situation. If he falls into one, he could be a guy that's an RB two. I feel like that's, that's pretty easy. And how many times do we do these yeah. rookie breakdowns where, like, half the running backs, like, yeah, we like this guy's upside, and we're like, dude, this guy has no chance. Uh, he's got a chance, but I agree I agree with what Garrett was saying based on the fact that he's 24, going to be 25 this year, that he doesn't have a lot of untapped potential. 
And well, and I don't great. I just and you almost have to it's hard to watch some of these guys and evaluate some of these guys that are this old because they truly are men playing against boys. So you almost have to look at it through that lens too, where you're like, he can't outrun this guy that's nineteen years old who probably hasn't even hit his peak yet. How is he going to do that in the NFL against guys that are the best of the best? So uh, there are some questions with with his athleticism. I think he's got great, I think initial quickness. Mm-hmm. He has next to no speed though, and and so that's yeah. and, that's and, where and, I struggle with him a little bit. Is is does he have enough speed to function? We'll see. I don't think he's going to be drafted at anything, at anything more than a third back, second, third and back. Ray Dan, I mean, let me, let he's me going to have to earn it from that. This guy is not in my top five of running backs. And like that. He's not, like I said, yeah. and that's what he said, like we're on the same page. Like I expect him to go somewhere around the fourth round of your rookie draft. I'm just saying like he's he's about to kick off what I'm about to say about a lot of these running backs. Like I liked his tape. I don't think he's special whatsoever. Yeah. But I think he can play in the yeah. league and I think he can be fancy. Again, we watched this tape for what? You know, why didn't I like gluteus minimus, right? Because I didn't think he could produce fancy football points. That's sure. it. Ray Davis is somebody who went after I watched his tape. He could produce fancy football points. Will like, he get the opportunity to? Maybe, maybe not. The but chances, he's capable. Uh, the way the NFL is nowadays, chances are if he's on a roster and he's the number two guy at, at some he's point. He's going to score points at some yeah. point. At, 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 there's going to be a stretch where he's going to be a useful guy. And that window for him, though, is very small and because he's he, just not going to be around. And can he, even get your, can he get somehow in position to even be in that window? Can you get a view right. of him in that window? Because some of these guys we're going to talk about, even like, oh, this guy, if he gets a chance, he can. Some of these guys we're talking about won't even get a chance. Yeah. But we're just trying to see if somebody, if, they, if they're even worthy to look at the window, right? Like, do yeah. I want to throw are a pebble for love? I mean, are they you, rosterable? I think he's rosterable. You should pack your roster, like your, the back end of your like roster with them like back on, backup yeah. running backs for that chance that they're going to. Have yeah. a startable week, or you can trade him or play him. But uh, just real quick for Ray Davis, for me, uh, just where he graded out in terms of like previous draft classes, uh, I have like he's close to Rico Dowdle, Abram Smith, Michael Pirine, Darrington Evans, Xavier Jones. Like those guys all so, like had some time on rosters, just yep. like we're talking about here. So, um, a lot of turdy fergies. Fundamental player. <laughs> Echo pretty much the same thing you guys said. Yeah. So, not much to add from me. Okay. 